फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर राजवी शाह फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड डेंटिस्ट्री गवर्नमेंट डेंटल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल आई एम हियर टू ब्रश यू अप ऑन योर फाइनल बीडीएस एग्जाम्स ऑन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज सर्वे प्रोसीजर्स द फर्स्ट लेक्चर व्हिच आई एम अबाउट टू टेल यू इज अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू पब्लिक टू सर्वे प्रोसीजर्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन uh what is actually a survey it's an investigation in which information is systematically collected but in which experimental method is not used that is it is a non experimental investigation that is once when you start the survey you cannot change any variables inside the survey what are the advantages of survey it provides new information it helps you to calculate the rates and indices helps you to study the associations and correlations example the correlation uh, between uh, eating consumption of sugary snacks with development of dental caries to find out about the facilities needed that is if you come to know that amount of decay is more in the population then you need to know how many dentists is re- are required how much manpower is required how much material is required then uh, the most important thing about a survey is if it is reliable complete and accurate it will make a difference in treating the disease and taking control of the problem what are the uses of survey it helps you to monitor the trends in oral health and disease you come to know if by taking proper precautions has the prevalence of dental caries gone down or not gone down uh, the prevalence of oral cancer if it is on the rise or is it on the fall and in which age group similar it helps you to make a policy development for prevention control and treatment of the disease it helps you in evaluating the program which have already previously conducted to find out if there has been a positive impact negative impact or no impact at all it helps you in assessing the dental needs and it helps in providing the visibility for the dental problems which are prevalent how can you collect the data first is you do a face to face survey which requires lots of manpower and time a health examination survey too can be carried out by the doctors and auxiliaries uh this too takes too much of time and it requires professional uh, people to help you out the next is health record survey which you can collect ready made from the hospitals or the dental facilities and next is a questionnaire survey which can be either mailed or it can be done on telephone or on face to face there are two types of questions which can be put in the question and survey the first is open ended questions where people uh, get to speak uh, without any leading questions so they can tell you the amount of pain when they experience the pain you can tell the, the whole history of the disease and then you can pick up the important points which are required this takes a lot of time the second is closed questions which are of two types they are either summative or cumulative so what is uh, summative there are four options in that agree disagree strongly agree and strongly disagree so the patient gets to choose which option uh, is the answer for the question you ask they've got four options while in gutman or the cumulative scale they have got only two options that is to agree or to disagree what are basic oral health surveys they are defined as survey to collect the basic information about oral disease status and treatment needed that is needed for planning or monitoring oral health care programs the objectives are to provide a full picture of oral health status and needs of a population and subsequently to monitor the changes in disease levels or patterns so that you can come to know what is the trend of the disease going on in 2010 2015 and in 20 there are two types of survey 
one is descriptive and second is analytical again in descriptive we have got two that is cross sectional and longitudinal and similarly in analytical survey cross sectional uh, survey means survey is carried out in a cross section of people while longitudinal means when the same persons are examined or investigated over a long period of time the objectives are initially to find out the full picture of oral health status and needs of a population subsequently to monitor the change in disease levels or patterns and lastly to evaluate the effectiveness of the health services being provided you can find out if the disease has gone prevalence has gone down or it has risen Special characteristics of the oral diseases are that diseases are age related they exist in all the population varying only in severity and prevalence dental caries is irreversible and extensive documentation has been carried out all over the world we come to an important topic that is null hypothesis it is the first step in testing of a hypothesis it asserts that there is no real difference in the samples and the population in the particular matter under consideration and the difference found is accidental and arises out of sampling variations that is when we start the study we start with the assumption that there will be no difference in the dmf score of rural and urban children if however we do find there is a difference then this null hypothesis is rejected and an alternative hypothesis is laid that is you say that there is a difference between the two groups of rural and urban population the dmf score what is calibration it is uniform interpretation understanding and application by all examiners that is when each examiner examines the same patient consistent results should be found for this the examiner is supposed to be trained for 2 to 3 days first is trained for 2 days and then calibrated for 2 to 3 days all the members of the survey team should examine in a consistent manner otherwise there will be wrong interpretation and important points may be missed so before survey there has to be a proper training of the examiners and a and then the calibration has to be done for proper results of the survey next we come to kappa statistics which is used to calculate intra and inter examiner reproduce, reproducibility that is what is the meaning of intra uh, examiner if the same examiner sees the patients again the finding should come in total agreement if they do not then accordingly the statistic varies what is inter examiner if the same patient is examined by different examiners who are carrying out the survey then there has to be either total agreement or there might be some differences then accordingly the kappa statistic is calculated as either being substantial or moderate ideally in a survey the kappa statistic should come between 0.8 to 1 that is there should be perfect agreement or good agreement 